The next requirement tells us each product belongs to a product line and a product line might have several products or none. Okay. For each product line, CRC stores an ID name and an importance rating. Okay, so all we are doing now is we already have product. Uh, we are adding another entity type called product line and adding a relationship between those two. Okay, so we are going to have product which already exists. And I think in one of the earlier things it said that product also has an attribute called weight, which we have added. I think it was there in one of the earlier slides, which I probably glossed over. Okay, somewhere in the middle, the product weight was shown as an attribute and I had added it. Just forgot to highlight it for you. Okay, so we've got product and product line. And it says uh, for each product line, CRC stores an ID name and an importance rating. So we've added product line ID, product line name and importance rating. Okay, and importance rating, uh, we, it's not very clear what uh, what type the attribute has to be. I just made it an integer. Okay, so when it came to uh, weight, also I think I made weight as a number. Okay, uh, and when you specify something as a number as opposed to an integer, an integer of course can only be whole numbers, negative or positive, whereas a number in general can take on any decimal values. And when you create a number in Oracle Data Modeler, you can specify the scale and the precision for a number, right? So scale tells you how many characters the number is supposed to occupy. You know, for example, the number can be 12345.89, okay? So the total number of characters is 7, and that is this, the scale. And the precision is how many points, how many digits after the decimal point. So in that case, it will be 7.2. 7, 2. Scale would be 7, precision would be 2. You could do that. Uh, one other point also that I forgot to mention is uh, when you had the, uh, for example, when you look at the sales order line, you see that unit price is one of its attributes. And for unit price, the attribute type I specified was money. Okay. Now, when you pull down in Oracle Data Modeler, when you pull down the, uh, uh, the drop-down box to specify a type, you see that money is an option. So it's a good idea to just use money uh, so that uh, later on in Apex when you generate screens and so on, uh, it'll show you that it's a money field by prefixing it with a dollar or something. Okay, so that's what we got. Okay, so this is what we have. Uh, we've got the product line and we said that every product line has, uh, could have many products or none because you may have just created the product line but you haven't added any products. Okay. Uh, but of course, every product must belong to a product line. That, that's the business rule of this particular company. Okay, so we have that. So as of now, our ERD now looks like this. Okay, so it's just all the previous ones plus the addition of product and product line, the relationship. Okay, now it says every product line belongs to a department. Each department can have one or many product lines. Okay, uh, so uh, again, we're just adding another entity type called department. So we've got the product line. We now add department, right? Uh, it says every product line belongs to a department, must belong to a department. Each department can have one or many product lines. So each department must have at least one product line. Okay, that's why this line is completely uh, uh, solid line okay now uh, in general it's not a good idea to have completely solid lines okay that is because it says to have a product line uh, you must have a department and to have a department you must have a product line okay it's very difficult uh, in a real scenario to create to see how these would get created right let's say you trying to create the very first uh, you're trying to create an instance of a department. Well, you can't do that unless it's connected to the product line. 
okay so that becomes a chicken and egg situation so it's always a good idea to have one of the entity one of the portions of the line as a dashed line just practical otherwise it becomes a problem but i just showed it to you like this in this example just to highlight that particular issue okay so now our erd looks like this we also added department okay so that's that's what it is okay then it says departments in crc are hierarchically organized and one department can have many other departments or none under it each department belongs to one dep other department or to none okay this is basically saying that you may have a department let's say you have the sales department and within the sales department you may have several sub departments each of those could have several sub departments okay this is just like the employees having subordinates similarly we're just saying departments have subordinate departments okay of course all of them are departments there's just connections among them okay so this is, is going to it's a unary relationship because some departments are related to other departments so you have got relationships between the department entity itself okay so it's a unary relationship and it's going to look exactly like your uh, employee scenario okay so otherwise it's it's identical there's really nothing to discuss here so right now our ERD looks like this okay then moving on it says CRC orders products from vendors by sending them purchase orders okay so we already spoke about sales orders right customers buying from CRC now in turn CRC is buying from its vendors right so now we are now talking about the purchasing part of it we've already discussed the sales okay so CRC sends uh, purchase orders to vendors okay so here we are talking about new entity types vendor purchase order okay for each vendor CRC stores an ID and a name each purchase order can be for certain quantities of one or more products okay so in this scenario what we are talking about is CRC simply buys from vendors sells to customers it doesn't manufacture anything it's a trading organization okay so once again purchase orders can be for uh, one or more products exactly like sales orders right instead of your customer telling you I want XYZ uh, products and so much quantity of each you're telling your vendor I want these products and for every product I want these quantities okay so clearly the each product can appear in many purchase orders right so for example I can place a purchase order today and say I want you know X number of coffee mugs and Y number of uh, uh, water water bottles and a month down the road I may place another purchase order in which I say I want you know 200 coffee mugs and then I want 500 uh, whatever tumblers or something like that okay so the same product can obviously appear on many purchase orders and of course a purchase order itself has many products is exactly like the sales order scenario okay so now we add vendor and we've got purchase orders right every vendor may have several purchase orders sent to them or none right because you've just created a new vendor you've not ordered anything from them so they will not have any purchase orders but every purchase order has to go to a vendor right you can't just create a purchase order and leave it in the void nothing will happen to it you say okay I'm sending it to this particular vendor right other than that you've got uh, between purchase orders and products there's a many-to-many -many relationship the purchase order can have many products product can appear in many purchase orders and therefore you need the associative entity and that is going to be purchase order line exactly like sales order line okay and clearly there's the unit price it says here uh, at a specific unit price and then there's the quantity okay so this is just the uh, mirror image of what happened in the sales side that's all okay so now again notice that I have used elbows in both of these that's because in our diagram this is where they're coming right so we've got the purchase order or this part of it this is what we saw in that previous page okay so that's you know pretty straightforward nothing nothing new going on here in fact you will see that the rest of the diagram is all fairly straightforward nothing subtle is going on okay vendors send in shipments against purchase orders from CRC right that is when they send a shipment they say this shipment is against your purchase order number XYZ 
Okay, so clearly one purchase order could result in several shipments, right? So in a particular purchase order, I might have ordered five different items and they may not send it all in one shipment. They may send it in multiple shipments, just like from Amazon when you order, your, your whole order may not come in one shipment depending on item availability and so on. That's what we are saying here. Okay, each shipment has a shipment number and a shipment date. So now you've got shipment, which is shipment number, shipment date, and connected to a purchase order, right? Ideally, shipment will also tell you which are all the items being shipped as part of that, right? So ideally speaking, your shipment will have also, just like sales order line, purchase order line, will also have a shipment line, okay? That's the ideal scenario, but you know, since we have seen it already twice, I didn't want to include that. So I just left it at shipment, okay? And again, it says a, uh, a purchase order may have many shipments for it. And in our example, we are just saying each shipment is for a particular purchase order, right? Now the relationship between shipments and purchase orders is not fully specified here, right? It's telling us a shipment, uh, a purchase order may have many shipments, but it's not telling us if a shipment can have many purchase orders. That is also possible. It could be a many to many relationship since it's not clearly mentioned here, I just assume for simplicity, it's a one-to-many relationship. Okay, so with that added in, our diagram now looks like this. You've added the shipment to purchase order here. That's this part. Okay, and then moving on, it says CRC makes payment to vendors and each payment could be for one or many shipments and indicates a payment date and amount paid. So here we are introducing a new entity type called payment and connecting it to our existing entity type called shipment, okay? And it says a payment could be for one or many shipments, okay? Again, it's not telling us whether a particular shipment can have many payments. That it's not telling us. So I'm going to assume here that a shipment can have only one payment. In other words, if you make a payment for a shipment, you have to make the payment in full. That's the simpli simplistic assumption we are making. Of course, in the real world, that may not be the case. You may have one shipment and people may make multiple payments for that shipment. For example, I make it a shipment for $500. I may not pay all the $500 in one go. I may pay 300, 200 as two separate payments. But here we are saying that's not the case. We are making a simplifying assumption. So now we add payment and we are saying a payment could be for many shipments, but every shipment can have only one, uh, has to have one, uh, might have one payment. Okay, that's what we are saying here. <coughs> In fact, uh, I should change this. This line should be completely dashed. Okay, although my diagram shows it as a fully, as a solid line on this side, that may not be the case, right? Why? Because you may have a shipment for which you have not yet made a payment. You just received the shipment, right? As of this point, you haven't made a payment. Eventually, you'll make a payment, but in your database, as of this point in time, there is a shipment with no payment associated with it. So actually speaking, this line here should be fully dashed, okay? Okay, so our diagram now looks like this. And again, this line should be fully dashed, okay? So that's what it looks like. Okay, now we're talking about payments that CRC receives from its customers. This is as opposed to the payments that CRC made to its vendors. So once again, we see that a payment could be for several sales orders, but each sales order, uh, you know, may have a payment or may not have a payment, but every payment must be for one or more sales orders. You know, people are not going to just come and make a payment out of the, out of the blue. Okay, so that's what this is uh, actually showing. But it's possible that you've got a sales order for which there is no payment. That seems a little odd. I mean, how come there's a sales order without a payment? Well, it could be that the sales order has been placed and the payment has not yet been made. So in our database, we see a sales order, no corresponding payment. That's all the diagram represents. The diagram doesn't say there's a sales order for which we never ever receive a payment. That's not what it's saying. It's saying, is it possible that in your database I can see a sales order with no corresponding payment? Yeah, payment has not been made. As simple as that. So that's really what this is depicting. But uh, what we are saying is that you cannot find a payment 
which is not connected with any sales order. Okay. Now you may say, well, the company may receive other kinds of payments. That's possible. But in this case, we are just assuming that all the payments are only for sales made and nothing else. Okay. So with that in place, our diagram now looks like this. And we've only got one more uh, requirement that is left, and that is this. It's about sales regions and customers belonging to sales regions. It says, CRC has many sales regions, and each customer belongs to one sales region. Right, so customer must belong exactly to one sales region. But a sales region could have many customers or not. So it's a one-to-many relationship, and we are clearly saying a sales region could have many customers or none. Sales region need not participate in the relationship. If you've got a sales region, maybe we've just created the region, we haven't yet allocated any customers. So you've got a sales region, but you don't see any customers. On the other hand, a customer must belong to a sales region. Okay, in other words, what we are saying is, when you create a customer, you have to assign them to a sales region. So it is not possible for you to see the database see within the database a customer to whom you have not yet allocated a sales region. That is not allowed as per the rules of this company. Okay, so that's what you get. And therefore, your final entity relationship diagram looks like this. Okay, so that's an example of a business scenario for which we have come out with a complete entity relationship diagram. And from this diagram, we can actually automatically generate the uh, SQL needed to create the database, right? So obviously, we understand that when we look at the database corresponding to this, you're going to have a table called VM, VProd. Each of these entity types is going to become a table. And of course, within each of those tables, there are going to be some foreign keys and so on that's connecting the entity types. All of that is going to happen. Now, one way would be for us to go and write all the SQL required to create all these tables and the connections. We could do that, but that's just unnecessary because with the information available here, Oracle uh, SQL Developer Data Manager can automatically generate all of that SQL. Okay, so once you've done this, you're perfectly set in terms of your database design. Okay. Uh, when we discuss the project, I'll post some videos on the project. There, I'll show you how exactly to convert this diagram into a database schema, which, of course, then you know how to load that into Apex. And once you have it loaded into Apex, you're good to go. Okay, so when you're talking about the project, I'll post a separate video talking about that whole process. So for now, uh, in this lecture, you've looked at a complete discussion of uh, conversion of business requirements stated in textual form which we might have gathered through conversations with people and then converting that into a very structured entity relationship diagram once you have that building an application as you will see very shortly is pretty straightforward and easy